This is Dr. Jeffrey Scott, and this is my weekend market update for Sunday, May 8th, 2022. I entitled today, Markets Drop After a Brief Fed Rally. My email address to contact me is hgsidoc at gmail.com. As much as I want to sound horribly bearish today, because I think that the markets are in a funk, and I do think the markets are likely to continue going down, I will show you a couple pieces of evidence that says it's not going to go on forever. And perhaps I, I had my billionaire indicator fired on Thursday. And my billionaire indicator is one of my friends who's a billionaire calls me usually right before the market spot him and asks me if he should sell his stocks. He called on Thursday. That could be a very positive sign for the market. Disclaimer, this is for educational purposes only. Any recommendations are in the spirit of education, not investment advice. I am a doctor, not a broker, tools demonstrator. Those I use in my daily trading. I paid for all these tools and trading involves risk and you alone are solely responsible for any investment decisions you make. I bring this slide back from the past because it's important that we know where we are and how we trade it. Um, Stocks that are high growth stocks, if you haven't figured out already, they may go up like rockets, but they come down like rocks. Right now, growth is not what's working. Every stock, every sector, every industry will follow this various pattern on multiple different time frames. There is no question where we are today, and that is somewhere in stage four. Are we at the beginning? Are we at the end? Only time will tell. And I'll show you evidence to support several different thoughts around that. Now, if you're in stage four, you must trade this market. If you elect to trade differently, then you trade a stage two. What does that mean? It means I'm selling calls at the money and buying calls out of the money for protection. I'm buying puts. I'm selling calls naked, I'm shorting stock, and I'm buying contra ETFs. I do all of these things during a down market. Probably the thing I do best at is buying contra ETFs. That doesn't mean I don't have any long positions because there are some things that are working, but this is not what my portfolio has looked like during bullish periods of time. So. All right, that said, let's go back into here. Okay, that should have worked. And let's take a look at the market. Again, I started using a spreadsheet so I could pull in some different tools. This is um, the warehouse view, a couple of them for HGSI. What I did is I listed some of the major indexes at the top, and I've ranked them here by percent off of 52-week high. I call out that the NASDAQ composite and the Russell 2000 are in deeply bearish territory minus 25 percent probably would since some people have told me a crash is at 30 percent probably approaching crash level and the dow and the s p are now down 11 and 14.3 percent respectively in correction not yet in bears you look at kathy wood's arc innovation it's down 65 percent from 52 week highs. Bitcoin's down 55%. IBD 50 ETF is down 40%. Biotech is down 36. Fang is down 35%. And oh yeah, the safe bonds, they're down 26.7%. So you look at these things and it's hard for me to see how you could be making money long trading equities here unless you're very focused on short time frames and going after the leading sectors and industries. Now, natural gas was interesting this week. I've been pounding the table for weeks on it. It was up 10.7, but I got my butt handled to me on Friday as it was down 8%. This is what natural gas does. It has big moves up, big moves down. And I've got, I take profits along the way so I don't get too upset on the pullbacks, but that five day move is a big move. 
Oil was up 6.4%. Commodities continue strong, up 2.9%. And the dollar, as I said during the live session I did um, on wealth charts on, I think it was Monday, on Tuesday, whatever day, Thursday rather, I said that don't forget in times of difficult times in the market, cash is a position. Um, lots of weakness out there. If you look at the sectors, the only sector that is close to break even on the year is the energy. Everything else is down with communications, 31%, discretionary 26 and technology 20% down. You'll notice over here, I should have perhaps used a different color. You'll see a lot of zeros. That means discretionary is at the low of the year. ARC is at the low of the year. IBD 50, biotech, FANG, bonds are at the low of the year. The NASDAQ and Russell, and I'm not even low of the year, the lowest day since they're, well, they're at the lowest low in 52 weeks. I'll put it that way. So we are not looking at strong markets here. Last time I introduced some folks to these that I used to use a lot and I still use on my day-to-day -day trading because they tell me a story of what the market's doing. The most important thing I say before I start on this is to keep in mind that this is actually looking at, um, eh, it went too far, at 50, at the, the S&P 1500, which would be different from other tools that I use. First thing is it's showing me that 40% of the stocks in the S&P 1500 are trading below their lower Bollinger Band. That is a signal in itself. It's a signal that says a bounce could be imminent. Doesn't guarantee it. And I've seen it get to 90% of stocks in the deep bear market of 2008 before it recovered. But that is telling me to pay attention that we could see another bounce imminently. 90% of the stocks are below the midline of their Bollinger Bands in the S&P 1500. Bearish. If we look down here, one day, two day, five, ten, and one month performance, we could see over one, two, five, and ten days, all the sectors have been negative, including energy and the S&P 1500. If we look at industry groups, and remember energy sector includes a lot of different um, types of stocks, not just natural gas or exploration and production. If we look at the industry groups over the last two weeks, there's been as much as 98% over five days and 97 over the last one or two are negative. And if you look at individual stocks, there actually was a bit of an improvement on Friday with only 83% of the stocks uh, down on the day and you could see going back two weeks, it's been a horrible number. This has been one of the most challenging times in the market that I've seen, um, frankly, since the 2007, 8, 9 bear market. Warehouse view. This one sort of struck me as, I don't really believe this, but I believe it because I run the same analysis every week. One of the things that I do is I keep track on a weekly basis of what happens in the market. And so if I go into my Dropbox, I can go all the way down here and I got a lot of stuff and I can pull up last week. So last week on 429, which would have been, that was Friday, I pulled off the entire database in HGSI so I could ask the question using the fundamental data from last weekend. And going forward, what worked this week? Well, the first thing is, you know how bad of a week it was? Well, at least that's what they're telling us on TV. Notice that there's a lot of stocks where the performance in this blue line is above 0%. This is ERG. ERG stands for EPS rank plus relative strength rank plus group rank. When it is above zero, that means that level of ERG is working. When it's below zero, it's not. If you look at EPS rank, the higher EPS rank stocks outperform this week. If you look at relative strength, higher relative strong stocks outperform this week. And if you look at stocks that were performing the prior week and accumulating, they actually outperform stocks that were distributing. 
very interesting. Does this mean this is over? No, it does not. But it's showing there might be some green shoots sitting there in this market. They're probably all in energy. Then also in HGSI, there's this thing called group performance analysis. So first thing, let me clarify something. This is not my individual performance for the week. What this is, is it takes a lot of lists that I like to look at and I pull stocks from that list that ultimately go onto my watch list. They might be stocks that I buy. But a question I always have is what's working and what's not. So in HGSI, they have a tool called Group Performance Analysis. And I'm able to say end of day the 29th to end of day the 6th. Okay. And then closing price to closing price. Based upon these groups that were chosen last weekend, what performed and what didn't perform. On the left are those groups that were up and on the group on the right are those groups that were down. Now, is it not, and by the way, shorting candidates, you want them to be down. Isn't it remarkable, first of all, with the negative news that we're getting, all the talking heads saying how bad it is, and it's bad, folks, that we have more groups that were up on the week than down. If I take a raw list of the stocks that I have, I had pretty much a 50-50 split of winners and losers, but I have a weighting, you know, I was actually up two and a half percent just on the names of the stocks. It doesn't mean my option positions, doesn't account for shorts or not shorts, but if I take my long positions on the week and just look at the tickers, the tickers were up 2.51. The S&P was down a little bit. It was close to flat on the week. In yellow, you can see some of the IBD 50 type lists, IBD 50, the weekend review, and Market Smith. In green, you can see some of my lists that I personally use. So my buy watch, again, not great performance from a picking winners, but 50-50, but 2.89%. And all this is looking at, it's taking the tickers, it's rounding the shares up and spending $1,000 per entity. So again, it does not necessarily reflect anything but what a list of stock does. But if the market's so bad, why do we have groups like stocks that were extended last week or gone that were up 10%? The best of Woodward and Brown, which is a pre-scan built into HGSI was up 713 um, Trilogy Buys, which is um, something that is based on some John Person work, was up 5.66%. Um, it just tells me that not all is lost in this market, and I also bet there's a whole bunch of energy stocks in those leading groups. NASDAQ, 23.54% of stocks are at 52-week lows. Awful. Are we getting ready to bounce? I don't know that. That's a pretty impressive number. And the bigger that number gets to the downside, the more my belief that a bounce is coming. Notice the absence of new highs and just massive new lows over the last couple of days. And we could see down here the NASDAQ's down 25% and it's at the low of the 52 weeks. The NYSE. A little bit different. Um, it did perk up some on Wednesday. Notice the NASDAQ on Wednesday still had no new highs. So it was not a small stock NASDAQ growth technology type of a rally as much on Wednesday as as we look at the NYSC, which might have more banks, energy and the like, you could see that rally. But we're getting a lot of stocks at 52 week lows on the NYSC. Now, these here are very bearish. A phoenix is sort of a foul through day to the downside. When I've seen it after the market has sold off a lot, it could be ex emotional exuberance to the downside, um, but I have to see some confirmation. If you just look at the list, every time the number gets to double digits, it pulls back. Double digits, it gets smaller. Double digits, it gets smaller. 
And all that's telling me is when the spring gets stretched, that in this case, 14.5% of the NYSE are at new lows, that typically the stock st market starts to recover. Again, green shoots, not necessarily hard evidence. Now, if I look at another way of looking here, and as I think about it, I sort of gave a fib. This, I believe, is looking at the complete market, although I have to check with um, Cigar. But if I look at the buckets, I'm at 17% below in the S&P 1500. Um, I believe that he calculates the same way, and maybe he's using the broader stock market. But 17% is a big number, but to shoot a little bit of the air in the balloon of the bulls, probably not big enough. It could go to 30, 40, 76% trading below the midline of their uh, Bollinger Bands. Again, bearish, maybe not enough. A couple things about energy. Natural gas got hammered on Friday down 9.3%, yet it was up 9.9 on the week. And look at natural gas, it's up 169%. Now, I think it's interesting that the UK and the, and the European gas continues to come down. They were big movers, and they started coming down the same time the U.S. natural gas started um, moving fat quickly up, and that's when we signed a deal to supply natural gas to make up for some of the Russian shortages. Based upon that, I believe that companies that are U.S. natural gas producers, LNG pipelines, refiners, shippers, as long as this war in Ukraine goes, especially as the world tightens the um, sanctions on Russia, that might be a place to continue to watch. Coal was up, look at coal, it's up nearly 300% on the year, and it's probably also some of it is going into Europe. The Baltic Dry Index, I'm back into Zim, I'm in Starbulk, and I've been in, I think, Golden Ocean. I try and overweight where we call wolf packs, where there's lots of things moving there. Those three shippers, which have ridiculous earnings expectations for the most part, their price is tied to the Baltic Dry Index. And unlike the major stock market indexes, this one is pretty much at a, 50, at a year high. It's off the December highs, perhaps, but it's in an uptrend and I watch this to know whether or not I want to be in dry bulk shippers. Metals, um, gold had a decent day, but I mean, gold can't get out of its funk. As soon as gold seems like it's running, the dollar starts rising and gold starts falling. So it's up a little bit on the year. Um, this is year over year. It's not compared to 52 week high or 52 week lows. It's just looking over 52 weeks. And lithium, I don't know what's going on here. It's sort of frozen um, in this um, report. Interest rates, this is the devil of the market. The arrows are where we were last week. And you can see both the 10-year and the 30-year are rocketing up. I put this purple line here because this is how high we got. I believe that was in 20. Let me get the right number. I was going to say 15, but I think that was 2018. Yeah, 2018, 2019 highs on interest rates. Um, and then you could see how they fell back with the market when the market tanked in March of 20 with COVID. We are getting up towards what is probably or hopefully will be resistance. A breakthrough that starts to put in play much higher rates. If we look at the FRED high yield index option adjusted spread, still down in the lower parts of the of the range when this spikes it means getting money is tough um i can tell you rates on mortgages are gone up rates on lines of credit are going up the cost of doing business is going up but you can still get money if i look at overbought oversold stocks above the 200 day dropped again stocks above the 40 day dropped again the only thing that bounced, interestingly, is the 12-week new high, new low bounced a little bit this week, but at 6.95% new highs to new lows. 
it's still at a level where reversals happen. I expect this to pull back further before the market bounces. Economic news, it's another big week. And all these red arrows, and there's a lot of duplication, are CPI stuff, their inflation. I think where last week we had Fed, we had um, a number of important data points, including the monthly unemployment report. This week, it's all about inflation. And this comes from Market Watch. Earnings, also a very big week of earnings. Um, when I have it on a PowerPoint, it says something along the lines. It's a judgment call to hold stocks through earnings. It's bad judgment to not know when your stock's earning date is. So you can always stop this and look harder. I get this from earningswhispers.com. Expected moves. This is the price of a straddle at the money. And it predicts the extension up and down of a index or a stock over, in this case, a week period. And 83% of the time when I do my back testing, the prices will finish within the expected move. You buy one of these if you think you're going to see an outsized move in the market. You might sell them if you're really wealthy and you want to collect money and don't care if you have to write checks every once in a while because um, most of the time you're going to win. But you're, you, you, you're, if you're selling them, you better have a big margin account because you're going naked on a, on a call and a put. So a couple of things. Just look at the S&P on the week. Um, didn't do much on Monday with a wide range. Tuesday and Wednesday it traded up. Actually got above the expected move on the week, but it's where it finishes it matters and it finished right below the expect where it started. So it was down a little bit on the week and this is the future, not the cash markets, but um, really not much change. Those that sold the straddle made money. The NASDAQ, exact same story, traded up on Wednesday, came down Thursday, Friday, finished within the line. The Dow futures actually traded down below the expected move and above the expected move in the same week. Doesn't happen very often, but closed within. Russell closed within, so the expected moves were met. Now look at the prediction for next week. Across the board, except for the dollar, the expected move predicts that the market is likely to go down. Now, I look at Twitter. And I look for things that are really gems. This one came out from Steve Depp. He looked at the S&P 500 five days down in a row and asked what happens next. We're so oversold, we must bounce. Well, here's the dates. And you'll notice many of these are during some really bad times in the market, 2008, late 2000, early 2001, 97. 87, 84. So it doesn't happen often. Just look out here at 12 week return. It was higher 42% of the time, which means it was lower 58% of the time. And the average return is minus 9%. So as much as I want to believe, excuse me, that was drawdown. This is the line here. It's, it's the average is flat but has been down as much as 25% up 24%, but it's down 58% of the time. And some of them minus 10, minus 25 can be significant. So this tells me that we're not out of the woods at all. And if you look at maximum 12 week drawdown, that's what <coughs> averaged about 10%. If you look at drawdown at the close, about 6%. There were some years like 97 where you had pretty big moves up over the last 12 weeks as well as 2002. All right. So that was one thing that stood out. Another thing that stood out to me were these. Right now, nearly half of the stocks of the NASDAQ composite are down 50% from their 52-week highs. Think about that. If it isn't a stock picker's market, it will never be. But boy, you got to be good because odds are you're going to be wrong. Then this is the, I, I called about, talked about the 10-year coming up to the 2018, 2019 highs. It's 15 basis points away. 
the five year has now hit the prior highs and the two year is just right underneath the prior highs. A break above these is probably a bad thing for the market. And then this, I should have the billionaire worried about a stock market indicator, which I mentioned in the beginning. But this is the same thing. This is when CNBC sees blood in the water, they do markets and turmoil specials. And you could see that a year after every one of their specials, every one of their specials, the market was higher by an average of 40%. So um, now the problem with this analysis is it only goes back to 2011-ish, 2010. So um, I can't say that it has 80 years of experience, but typically this happens at the same time the billionaires get worried. And that's usually near the end of a market um, pullback. So my thoughts before we go into look at more charts, we again saw a broad base sell off as concerns rose about inflation rates and pace of tightening. Lots of earnings on tap again, uh, bad earnings, revenue projections weigh on individual stocks and ebb and flow of the war and peace process will whipsaw. We raised Fed raised 50 basis points as expected, maybe took 75% basis points off the table, still data dependent. This week, we get a deep look at consumer inflation. Bulls looking for numbers to come in light. Wednesday saw a massive rally as Fed Powell appeared to be less hawkish. As I've mentioned, and I will mention again and again and again, the largest rallies occur during bear markets. Beware traps. And I have traded through 1998, dot coms, 2007, 2020, and so on. It is hard to make money being long in bear markets. One must treat each rally as it is, a counter trend rally and expect a failure. The key to surviving bear markets is having cash available to take advantage of the next bull market when you can buy stocks on sale at deep discounts. I am not saying you can't go long. I'm saying if you go long, you should be small and you should be short thinking as far as the duration of those trades. Of course, you can as Kramer says, there's a bull market somewhere and you might look at energy today and what, what rotates in tomorrow as places to consider. Um, and despite the negativity, as I've already mentioned, a couple of green shoots, there's some signs of positivity in this market. All right, now let's go into wealth charts. For those who've not been here before, I, I have a tendency to do these rants and raves when I think the market is at an interesting um, position. Um, this is an interesting position in the market, so I go long. Long-winded. Um, I put this on one of my nightly uh, videos, and here it basically says, the S&P had more than 2.25% gain on a day the Fed hiked interest rates. That has happened only once in 40 years. That was March 21st of 2000. And for those who don't have a good sense of what happened thereafter, two, three days later, the market peaked and it dropped over 50% with the, you know, the 2000 dot com uh, bear market as tech stocks decided you don't get priced based upon revenue projections. Just something to keep in mind. That would be the opposite of green shoots. Let's look at the indexes. Um, I don't think I want to show you anything that you're not aware of. We are at a level here. We close kind of right where the February 24th, let's go invade Ukraine from the Russia perspective. Stock market opened and closed up. So we have bounced here before. Um, we have closed here. A break below this level, hard for me to want to be long in this market. Um, the Q's, new lows, new recent lows for a long time. And the question on the Q's, are we destined, let's just go to the weekly. Give me a second here. On the Q's, are we destined to revisit the 2019 highs? I don't know, but it wouldn't shock me. Would it shock you? That would be another third from here. That would be problematic for me and for everybody else in this market. 
because I kind of doubt the market's going to survive um, everywhere else. It won't be just the Qs that pull back. The Dow, again, another instrument that is right above the, the February 24th lows. The Russells trade down to multi-month lows as well after failing at prior where support turns into resistance. The VIX on the week, you can see it came back into the range, but the VIX was still up, actually was down on the week. It was up early in the week. Making money trading volatility instruments despite the ugliness in the market has been challenging of late. The dollar remains strong. I already talked about interest rates as being the challenge and you could see here the TNX closing at a monthly high, getting back and, and threatening these 2019 highs. So that'll be interesting to see what happens there. Um, you could see as the VIX, as the interest rates go up, you can see that value is favored over growth. Oil had a reversal on Friday, bullish looking candle while gas sold off. It's done this before on my nightly video or morning video on Friday before the market opened, uh, which I actually recorded Thursday night. I said that if you look at my high jump, we were at 100% on this candle. I said it was coming back and it did. Market theme, large caps and value are in charge. Sectors are kind of a mess. Um, there's a lot of green shoots. If you look at some of the beaten down things, the utilities popped up some, real estate popped up a little bit, healthcare coming up, discretionary, no materials, wants to make another run, communications, not really, energy, yes. Industrials gave up a little bit at the end of the day on Friday. So, are we in for some more painful market rotation? Um, potentially. What I want to look here is, is commodities versus the spider. And you could probably look at this comparing a lot of different things. And the point here is we've broken out among trend lines that went back to 2008. And that we broke out above this trend line, continued to go lower, and we broke above this trend line, and the ratio of commodities to spiders is now going up. That makes me concerned for the markets, but it's also why my portfolio is heavily weighted right now in commodities. If I go into the dashboards, we'll go start with Sector Scanner. Um, you could see even though the market was pretty ugly on Friday, some defensive stocks, energy and utilities led the way. Now, sometimes a little bit nervous about these because you'll have things in here. Let's just look at them like education that showed a 44% move. And then let's look at the education and you'll see it's driven by a single stock. So I've used the program long enough and this is warrants on that same stock that probably I would not want to look at education because of the top line number because of that reason. So if you take out education and training, um, it's pretty likely consumer defensive is going to turn out to be negative as well. So energy and utilities were what led this week. And if I look at energy and utilities and I go compare, you can see the different groups come up. And since it's only a small number and then I compare the top stocks come up and I like to take the top stocks in this list and probably go down to everything that was neutral or above, hit the left, sh hit the shift button, left mouse button. They're all highlighted. Make sure I'm on my bullish list. Default watch is weekend review. Perfect. And I might add these to my watch list. Now, that would be if I'm approaching the market from a top-down approach. If I was doing it from a bottoms-up approach, then I would probably have highlighted, let me go back one more, all the sectors, 
all the industry groups whoops wrong way and then I might take the top of the top stocks and look at that would be a bottoms up approach versus a more focused sector to industry group approach I've already done and built my list for the longs and the shorts now in wealth scanner I have a number of things that I could do let's start by going to my top-down indices in my top-down indices I have some interesting things I mentioned before that gas turned back um, this was at a hundred yesterday it turned back today do I think it'll come back to the 17 absolutely and I'd probably load up and buy it again off the 17 strong dollar we know that short the bonds we know that TBF goes up as bonds go down and then it's a bunch of commodity things gasoline oil expiration production commodity index XLE services and then staples and utilities so we're still seeing a market dominated by the commodities now I could go in here and I could throw up all symbols and I could start to get a sense of what's working in the market so I probably could have answered the question better on Thursday when someone asked me why don't I just do this so because I want to approach it from a top down I want to find the stocks in the right industry groups and sectors that are working instead of just buying the best stock why because in my experience well they're probably going to be overlapped a lot but when you have a good industry group propelling the best stock it does better Southwest gas holdings could be setting up nicely at a buy pulling into the 17 with a reversal candle there Blackstone minerals again could be setting up it's going into a squeeze pulling down to the 17 ring energy has already broken out cheap stock Kraft Heinz uptrend pullback and it had um, a breakout so I'm finding stocks that are leaders they might not be in the best buy position that's what happens when you look at it from this perspective instead of looking at um, trading signals so these are great stocks but there's not a bottoms up and uh, not a top-down approach and I don't know that they're in a particular buy mode but what I do know is that they are in um, they've been leaders I could come down and I could look at individual indexes NASDAQ 100 the only thing that's bullish in the NASDAQ 100 is craft what's leading to the downside electronic arts Skyworks ISRG intuitive surgical so just gives you a sense of how bad the Nasdaq is now since I know that energy is an attractive place to be I could just pull up a list of oil gas and coal stocks which I've got already set up here and what will come to the top is that ring energy which is a very cheap stock EQT which I, I always thought this was a shale producer but I like the fact it's pulled back into the 17 PBF couple of red days but a leading um, refiner so I could certainly do that but I want to look at things that are ready now so I'm going to go into my cat scanner and let's look at um, all symbols we're going to do the same type of analysis and then I like to rank on my dots and I could see this ATGE volume price it's in a squeeze with four dots let's take a look at it so the four dots are gap up big volume breakout and momentum by my definition if I close in the lower part of the bar as this one did I dropped the gap up signal so here's a stock that's been in a downtrend that failed at the 200 day moving average I would not buy it but it is showing big volume a breakout momentum from a squeeze and my EMS indicator so there might be things to like there um, in a bear market I don't like to buy things that just failed at that 200 NRG is a utility 
and utilities might be a place to be looking at right now. And you'll notice with NRG that took out its 200 today, had an EMS on Thursday, today being Friday, although it's not Friday today when I'm doing this. And there's your gap dot, your volume, your breakout and momentum, and a PSAR reversal in the same bar. That one looks playable. So I could go down the list. Here's Reinsurance Group of America. Don't know anything about them, except a number of insurance stocks looked interesting today. Here you go. You got your four green dots, which means gap, volume, breakout, momentum. You had a wealth signal and an EMS breaking out a stock that's been in a downtrend, though, and I prefer to buy stocks in an uptrend. So you could go through this list one at a time which I do down fairly far. Um, I could thin this and I have a list of stocks that meet certain criteria. And I build this list because a lot of people ask me for this list. And I, I share within the remarks section of my YouTube area um, the code for this. But I go through a lot of different lists, whether it's my, some of my trade station scans, some of my HGSI scans, some of my um, websites that I might go to scans, things like IBD 50, Market Watch, things that are published scans. And I combine all these different scans into a list that has about 600 stocks. And these 600 stocks are, somebody put them on their list of their best stocks. And to me, if somebody put them on that list, I want to look at them. Now I can take that list and I can, do more with it, such as using my various tools. Um, I'm going to make this a little simpler on me. So I've got $5 and let's make it 500,000 shares. Um, I want at least two stars of option liquidity. That tells me I can do options. I've got greater than one bullish dot, less than one bearish. And let's give it a squeeze and apply. So in that entire list, a small number of stocks are going to make these criteria. Now, why do I like all these criteria? Look at Barry Global. All right. It's not in an uptrend. And you can see the, the weekly and monthly bongo are red. Three dots in a squeeze. Um, I like the story here. I don't like the fact it's 10% away from its 200 day moving average. CERS is a biotech or a healthcare stock. You know, the problem with the market is such a big downtrend. Everything is in a downtrend. And what happens in a downtrend? I've got all these people that bought it up here and higher are saying if it only gets high enough, I'm going to sell it. So these are tough. Um, I did find a couple I like today. Here's TXRH again in a downtrend. LNG, not in a downtrend. Remember I talked about um, carriers of liquid gas that might benefit with this. This is one of them. Um, yeah, I'd rather have bought it off the 17 day. You might put on your watch list and look for a pullback. But to me, it's something that's attractive right here with a breakout and momentum. Now, let me see where these else are. GPRE is another one that looks interesting. Um, it wasn't a big uptrend. It had a big pullback. Probably would not buy it here because of the overhead supply, but this is another in the refining space. I think they do some ethanol as well. Merck in the big pharma space, a leader in oncology or cancer care, which is my business. This is one that has a 17 above the 50 above the 200. All three time frames are in a bullish uptrend. So these are a lot of things that I like, and I have a um, Big volume day. It's broke, had an EMS back here, a pullback. Looks like it's ready to go higher. Merck looks interesting. Now, one of the problems is that a lot of what looks good are things like Hershey, um, which has had a big uptrend and its multiples are getting high. You can look at things like Kraft, KHC is another. And why do these look so strong? It's not like they're growth stocks. It probably has a lot to do with the fact that they are um, defensive plays. Now, let's take off that option liquidity. 
just going to leave it as zero. And you can see a lot more entities come up here. If I take off the squeeze, I may have stocks that have already broken out. So let me just pull that off. And then one of the stocks that I liked is a utility. So let's look at utilities. NRG, we've already talked about. I don't know if I talked about it here or not, but NRG here is breaking out. Gap up on volume, breaking out momentum. This to me is um, looks attractive. I'm also going to be watching Sempra. Why? Because it just had a beautiful pullback to the 50-day moving average and then had a breakout on big volume on Friday. I probably, if I was going to trade it, let it clear that 17-day. But this one looks like it may want to go higher as well. So as a top-down investor, I built a list of attractive stocks, which was the weekend review. And let's just take a look at these stocks real quick. And I always rank them by dots. That ATGE keeps coming up. This is a global education stock that closed at the bottom of the gap, so I was going to skip it. We looked at NRG. UNM is an insurance company. A lot of insurance companies looks good. This is actually a pretty stock. EMS buy, four dots, so gap, volume, breakout, momentum. The only thing that worries me is um, it's extended. That, you know, the distance between the stock and its moving averages is the highest it's been in quite some time. Um, sometimes I will ignore it when something is coming out of such a tight contraction. So I may be looking at UNM, especially if it pulls back. I think what else I saw this weekend. You know, speaking of defensive plays, look at Clorox. What's new in bleach? Now, Clorox had gotten in July of 2020 was a 239 stock. And if you want to talk about the opposite of a COVID stay-at-home stock was Clorox bleach falling in half. Now, all of a sudden, it's moving again. So Clorox looks interesting. So you have a breakout with momentum with a wealth signal and a EMS signal. So there's a lot out here. I'm finding it surprisingly easier today to find attractive stocks, um, which is another potential green shoot. Now, lastly, how do I filter out stocks that have been in downtrends because I don't like buying stocks that were in downtrends. Let me show you something cool. I am going to go into my filters and I'm going to turn on, I'm going to have a requirement that I have a bullish bongo weekly. So all of these stocks have to be in a short term weekly uptrend. So let's just pick one. We'll pick ARW, Aero Electronics. Notice short-term weekly uptrend, longer-term daily uptrend. Monster, well, that's an old name. It's a consumer staple defensive play. So it's in a weekly and daily um, uptrend. Look, if it wasn't for this 200-day moving average and all this overhead supply going back for a year, um, this is at a very attractive place. And I could certainly go down this list. And how about Smuckers? What's What's new in JAM? I don't know. And I'd have to look at the fundamentals. It looks like it's, you know, had a long run. It's not stretched by my high jump calculation, probably because it's pulled back. But look at this. Break above the 17. I got a breakout in momentum. All three time frames are up. Smucker's JAM. Are you seeing a theme? A theme of stocks that are safe? Let's go just look at um, Staples. I think I have that up here somewhere. Clorox, Kellogg's another one. Look at this. I ate some cereal today. I guess that should make me bullish. I mean, these are things that are getting expensive. And um, 
this one has come to let me go put this to monthly out of curiosity whoops didn't mean to do that let me change that back to daily go back here and change this one to monthly yeah it's still way off its monthly highs so maybe I'm not so worried about this one but look at Kellogg's so you want to find excitement you want to see beautiful chart patterns look at bleach and cereal um, how about Campbell soup um, what does this tell you about what's going on in the market these are defensive these are places you can hide dividend payers utilities I mentioned a couple already NRG breaking out SRE pulling back getting ready to run so there are places to be in this market and let's look at energy before we say goodbye but you got to pick your places let's look at energy oil gas and coal quite a few made the list and I already showed you LNG is one that I like a lot and I think it's in the right place um, and it's not overly extended you could see on this red bar here which if you have my marketplace is a high low oscillator it's only at 62 percent so other things here that I might lack. let's see Devin what a breakout this week this is one that we've been talking about a lot not on the list oxy is one that also looked interesting to me and let's pull that up here as well big run certainly is getting extended that's probably the only reason to not be excited by this stock and why else isn't it up here or is it up here I just not seeing it no all right so I mentioned contra ETFs let's just look at some of those very quickly let's look at if you think the markets going down and you want to be short the Dow and you're in an account that doesn't allow you to be short the Dow let me add my dog back in DOG not Dogecoin so what about being short the Dow this is what they're all going to look like on the right is in horrible downtrends because of the big rally and now you're starting to turn and your weekly and your monthlies are supportive that would be if you thought you wanted to be short the Dow and wanted to buy a long interest instrument what about if you want to be short the S&P 500 but with a long interest in, in, in instrument this is the SDS again these things have sold off horribly multiple um, re inverse or reverse splits occur what else do we have we have the queues if you don't believe in the in technology and you want to be short the queue by buying a long instrument which unfortunately many IRAs that's all you can do this is a contra ETF for there what about small stocks TZA and notice they're all green all right green over a month green over a week so these are things that have really started moving and these are some one way to play the mark to the downside from my PowerPoint um, contra ETFs these are some of the favorite ones that I will play and then how about you're not a Kathy Wood fan believe it or not there's a short the arc fund and since the arcs at its 52-week low you can guess this is at the 52 week high so there's something for everyone so let me summarize it is a difficult market be careful if you're going to play it long try and go into those industry groups and sectors where they're working don't try and guess the bottom on an individual stock it can get much lower I'm seeing some green shoots so be aware <clears throat> that we could see rallies emerge but also remember dead cat bounces are what you usually see in a bear market rally trade safe have a great week for those that um, purchased my marketplace package this week I'll see you Monday 
I think it's from 1 to 3. If I remember correctly, we'll be doing a follow-up educational class. And for those that might have interest in that package, um, just email me at hgsidoc at gmail.com. Have a great week, everybody. Sorry for the length.